you're looking to dive into topics on how to live a happier, healthier, more fit, and long lifespan, then you've come to the right podcast. Living the dream with me, Coach Damian Evans. Together, we will explore the topics on all things health, fitness, and wellness. Together, we will be lifelong learners on this journey to living the ultimate dream. What up, dream team? Coach D here coming at you with a bite-sized brain snack. These episodes were inspired because of our obsession with snacks. We love to fuel our bodies with these little bite-sized nutritious foods, and we've also talked about adding movement snacks into your day the same way. So we have food and we have movement covered, but what about our brains? It's time to add some little bite-sized brain snacks into your week, and that's what these episodes will be all about. Bite-sized wellness wisdom for lifelong learners. So let's open up and satiate our minds. This brain snack is going to be all about manifestation, visualization, and as crazy as it may sound, possibly even discovering the ability to time travel in order to take care of our future selves. Visualization is a powerful tool that can help you manifest your ideal future. But do you know what's even more powerful? Taking actionable steps toward making it happen. Drew Proitt, host of the Drew Proitt podcast, he recently sat down with Dr. Tara Swart, a neuroscientist, to talk about the mind-blowing science of manifestation. And she shared how she uses action boards to harness its power. If you want to learn about the science behind manifestation, about the science behind action boards, and how to use them to attract the things in your life, I highly recommend picking up a copy of Dr. Tara Swartz's book called The Source. In this episode, we're going to be walking you through how you can create your own action board so that you can manifest your ideal future by, and here's the key, by pairing visualization with action and also learning about how we can become our future self's best friend. So how does an action board differ from a vision board. You've probably heard of a vision board, or maybe you've even made a vision board yourself. Many people use vision boards to help envision their dreams or their ideas using images or pictures or words that represent what they want their ideal future to look like. Action boards are similar in that sense, but here's where they differ. While vision boards are centering on visualization and manifestation of your future, action boards go deeper and they combine your desires with the energy of your emotions. Here's what I mean. Dr. Tara Swart details the neuroscience behind action boards and why they work in her book. And she says that the source best responds to hard work and taking action. The source. The purpose of an action board is to prime your brain to become more aware of the things that you are seeking. This is going to make you better prepared to recognize and then seize opportunities when they actually come your way. Before we get into how to get started in creating your own action board to bring your future goals to life, let's cover a few do's and a few don'ts and best practices to get the most out of this exercise. So here are the things that you do want to consider when you're making your own action board. While you're collecting images, keep in mind that you wanna choose ones that feel authentic to you. And they don't have to be literal either. Feel free to select images that are abstract, metaphorical, or symbolic. They don't have to make sense to anybody else besides you, but they should feel authentic. Also, place the images on your action board with intention. Dr. Tara says that there are benefits to having meaning behind the actual placement of your photos. For example, the ones at the bottom might be foundational, where the ones at the center might represent your innermost desires. Here are a few don'ts to keep in mind when you're creating your action board. Try to avoid having a lot of words and text. If there's a quote, phrase or number that resonates with you, definitely include it, but try to have your space be mostly images. 
This creates a powerful impact on the visual centers of your brain when you look at it and it paints a clear picture of what you want so that you can begin attracting it into your life. Also, don't overcrowd your board with pictures. Don't overcrowd. We want our board to evoke a sense of calm, but not overwhelm. Leaving space on your board is also symbolic of leaving space in your life to allow room for the unknown or the mystical to take place. And then don't rush the process. Take your time collecting images. It could take a few days or even weeks until you find the right ones that feel good and meaningful to you. When it's time to organize them on your board, don't just glue them down right away. Put them down, take a step back, and come back to fine tune the placement of your photos. Okay, so now try this. Now that we've covered the do's and the don'ts, it's time to get started creating your own action board. There are a few steps here. Number one, you're going to want to get clear on your goals for the next 12 to 18 months. An action board is meant to encompass your goals for about a year's time frame. This helps focus your mind on small attainable goals, and you can create separate action boards for different areas of your life. So business, family, personal life, or you can include all images on just one board. Number two, Gather your materials while you're getting clear on your vision for the next year or so begin searching through magazines or online pictures that align with your goals. And remember, they don't have to be exact representations, but they should actually mean something to you and they should trigger some sort of emotion that puts your body into a state of positivity and transcends the desire for your own dream life here. Then number three, create your action board. Once you have your stack of images ready, it's time to start arranging them on how you want to arrange them on the board. You can use a poster board or a piece of computer paper. It doesn't really matter. Just be intentional with the placement. Group related images together and then trust your gut and turn inward to organize your board in a way that feels good and makes sense to you. And number four, review and refine the placement of your images. After you finish assembling your images, pause and take a step back and then make any necessary changes to ensure it represents your true intentions. This might take coming back once or twice or a few times. And remember not to rush this thing. When you're ready, then you can glue the images on your board. And lastly, place your action board somewhere that you'll see it daily. I like to keep my action board by my bedside because I can look at it every night and have it be one of the last things that I see before I go to bed and one of the first things that I see when I wake up. Your brain is super impressionable during this time and it can help tap into what's known as the Tetris effect. Yes, like the old school game of Tetris. This Tetris effect is a phenomenon that Dr. Swart describes in her book that's quite fascinating. It's when you invest so much time and so much energy into something that it begins to pattern your thoughts and dreams and imprints your subconscious with the things to look out for during the day that you want to attract into your life. The Tetris effect. You can also take a picture of your action board and set it as wallpaper or your lock screen on your phone where you'll see it as often as you pick up your phone, which is a ton. If creating an action board in the physical form doesn't float your boat, you can try making a digital version using an application like Word or Canva. Selecting images and organizing your board by hand does have its own advantages though. The physical touch and feelings connected to the images that you choose, they can transmute that desire and positive energy into your final product. However, it's not necessary to create a functional action board. You can create it digitally. Action boards are a potent tool to turn your dreams into reality. They combine the power of visualization with tangible action steps, aligning your mind and actions toward your desired future. I am a huge fan of visualization. When I was younger and I was in sports, my dad used to say, close your eyes and visualize in your mind's eye what you want to happen. So when I had a PK in soccer or a free throw, Close the eyes, visualize what's going to happen, the swish of the net, actually see it in your mind, actually feel what it feels like when it happens in your mind. And that really stuck with me. 
Next, I want to share a powerful visualization exercise that I learned from UCLA professor Hal Hirschfield to help you move closer towards your goals and dreams that you want to achieve in life. I've recommended Hal Hirschfield's book before, and I want to recommend it again. It was incredible. It's called Your Future Self, Your Future Self by Hal Hirschfield. Based on over a decade of research, he explores how connecting with our future selves can both improve our lives right now and help us achieve our goals and hopes for the future. Put it on your up next list. You won't regret it. Your future self. Now, this powerful visualization exercise has two steps. Number one, you're going to write a letter to your future self. Number two, you're going to write a letter from your future self to your current self. And I know this sounds a little weird, a little strange, but trust me on this. This exercise is super powerful, and I'm going to explain exactly how to do it and why it works. First things first, why do so many people abandon their hopes and dreams? Here's the thing. When we think about our future, our brains are faced with a huge challenge. Our brains see our future selves as distant or abstract from who we are right now. He talks about this in the book, how they've done studies and they've shown that when we see our distant future selves, we see that person as more of a stranger than as our own person, which is a huge part of the reason why we procrastinate in life, why we choose instant gratification decisions, and why we have a hard time creating the dream life that we deserve. Sometimes it can seem cloudy when we imagine that future self way in the distance And where we hope to see ourselves in five years or 10 years or even 50 years from now, because the future is, it's really hard for us to picture and visualize. We really end up treating it like a completely separate entity from ourselves. And although we do this subconsciously, it can really interfere with our ability to visualize achieving our own goals and dreams, which makes it super difficult to map out the steps that are going to make it a reality. So how visualization can help, visualization can be a game changer when it comes to connecting the dots between your current self, where you are now, and your future self, the person that you want and wish to become. The key to visualization is picturing the future event while also teaching your nervous system to become familiar with the sensations, the thoughts, and emotions that you want to experience along with it. So you're visualizing this future event but you're also teaching your nervous system to become familiar with all the things that come along with it. This is why writing a letter is such a powerful tool. You're pairing visualization with conversation, and this can help you better see the steps you need to take that will drive you toward action. But for this to work, you're gonna have to get clear on the why behind your goals, that big why. Understanding your motivation will help make it easier and more compelling to feel connected to your destination. Your goals can be whatever you want. They don't have to be limited to health, career, money. They can be fun and pleasure-seeking too. Take some time to get super clear on what you want your future to look like. What is the best possible life outcome that you can imagine? Picture it. Write it down. Dream big. Are you strong, fit, and healthy? Are you surrounded by a loving group of people? Do you have a career that you love and look forward to? Do you have a relationship that feels strong, secure, and healthy? Do you have hobbies that you love to engage in daily? After you get a clear picture of your ideal future, you can then start the letter writing process exercise. The first part of this exercise aims to help you connect to and find the contrast between your current self and your future self. The second part of the exercise, writing a letter from your future self back to your current self, this can help you see the bigger picture and it can help you work backwards to outline the steps to help you get there. Just like when we set a goal, we go to the end destination and then we cut it down into smaller steps and then we attack those smaller steps over time. Small steps become a huge, huge progress in the future. Both of your letters should be in first person. This is going to leave no room for ambiguity between you of the now 
and you of the future. You're the same person with the same ambitions, just at a different point in time. Okay, so here it is. Try this. When writing a letter to your future self, you're going to write this letter and you want to feel authentic. Give yourself the freedom to have fun with it and dream big as long as it feels aligned with your goals. Here are a few guidelines to make sure that you're on the right track. When you're being authentic, you want to write to your future self in a way that feels genuine to you. And don't worry about grammar or perfection. Talk about your current life and what you want to happen in the future and the emotions that you're going to feel when that vision comes true. Keep it positive. Manifestation responds best to a positive mindset and create a dialogue that comes from a place of appreciation, a place of gratitude, joy, and a place of love. Get specific. Write down exactly what you envision for your future self. The stuff we're talking about right now should help you with that. Be as detailed and as clear as possible on your goals, on your timeline, and on your overall outcomes. And again, don't be afraid to dream big within reason. You don't want to set yourself up for failure or disappointment by going way, way, way too big. So it's important to ensure that your goals are realistic. For example, you can't expect to become an Olympic athlete within a year's time with no experience practicing the sport. The goal here is just to make your letter as personal and as unique to you as possible. Here's an example of what your letter to your future self might look like. Dear future me, look at all you've accomplished. You've settled into your career and you love every minute of the impact that you're having. You've raised your family in your dream home and you have invested in creating a healthy, happy marriage with your spouse. Even though it was tough, you stayed consistent with your resistance training workouts and are stronger than ever. You played with your grandchildren every day and you found a creative outlet in painting. You've traveled around the world and you've hiked beautiful places. It wasn't always easy and there were a lot of ups and downs, but I am so proud of where you are now. Love, present me. Next, you're going to write a letter from your future self back to your current self. Now it's time to reverse engineer the exercise and your future writing a letter from your future self back to your current self. And this can help you gain a new perspective and feel even more connected to the bigger picture of your life's goals. Here are some prompts you can use that might help take you to that place while you write your letter. What is your daily routine? How do you spend your days? Who are you surrounded by? Your friends, your family, your community? Who is it? How do you treat others? How do you act in the face of challenges? What are your greatest achievements? And what brings you joy and purpose? Here's an example of what your letter to your current self might say. Dear present me, I know from where you're sitting right now, your future feels so far away. But let me offer some comfort in knowing your efforts have paid off. Your career has taken you places that you never thought imaginable, and you're surrounded by a loving family, spouse, and friends that support you. Even though you feel weak in your body right now, I want to let you know that your strength training, it's paid off. By staying consistent, you have the independence and strength to travel the world and back, to hike to the tallest of mountains, and to do things in your life that bring you joy. You might not be where you want to be right now, but stay the course and keep working hard at it. It's going to be worth it, I promise. Love, future me. Note, your journey might not unfold exactly how you describe it in your letter, but reflecting back on your life can help you better understand how the pieces fit together. Then create the action plan or an action board. Now you know the direction that you want to go in. It's time to create an action plan. Here are some prompts to help you figure out the first steps to take. What are small changes that you can make to get one step closer to your future self? What daily habits would you have to implement today to become your future self? And what current daily habits do you have that you might have to change, reduce, or even remove to become your future self? 
Schedule regular check-ins to help you stay on track and don't be afraid to ask for support from someone that you know who can help hold you accountable. And this last action here is something that I do my absolute best to try to do with every decision that I make every day. Treat your future self like your best friend. When you cook dinner at night and you see that huge pile of dishes and you say to yourself, ah, we're just going to leave that for tomorrow. How do you feel the next day when those dishes are still there, disgusting, piled up, creating this subconscious anxiety and fatigue in your brain? You feel pissed. You didn't do it the night before, and that sucks. When you leave a tiny bit of milk in the bottom of the jug in the fridge, and instead of finishing it off and throwing it away, you just put it back in the fridge. Not really enough milk in that thing to do anything with. How do you feel when you are looking forward to getting milk and you open up the fridge and you pull out that milk jug? Pissed. You probably forgot you didn't have enough. Now you have this bowl of cereal that you poured and now you have dry cereal that you can't eat. You have to pour it back into the box. Pissed. How do you feel when you're watching TV at night and you know you have to wake up early in the morning and you should get all your things ready for the next day, but you figure you'll just do it in the morning. Maybe you'll just wake up five minutes earlier and you'll do it then. The morning comes. How do you feel? Pissed and tired. Why didn't I just do it last night? Now you're fatigued. You're rushed in the morning. You start your whole day on the reactive and defensive and, it, and you're all discombobulated. That's right. Discombobulated. Great freaking word. Now, what does this look like if you could treat your future self as your best friend? Treating your future self as your best friend might just be the secret sauce to living a more organized, stress-free, and fulfilling life. Your goal is to avoid those cringe-worthy frustration moments, those times when we procrastinate or we neglect our future selves. So here are some tips in order to make this happen. The five-minute rule. One way to show up for your future self and show your future self some love is by adopting the five-minute rule. If a task takes less than five minutes to complete, you must do it immediately. Whether it's responding to an email, tidying up your workspace, or making your bed, these small actions add up and can save your future self from a mountain of tiny tasks that would otherwise pile up and accumulate. Tip number two, the power of prepping. Remember, those early morning scrambles to finding matching socks or finding a clean coffee mug, Say goodbye to those chaotic moments by prepping the night before. Lay out your clothes, pack your bag, and set the coffee maker. Your future self will wake up to a smoother morning routine, and you'll feel like a superhero for setting everything up the night before. Tip number three, calendar your commitments. Treat your calendar as a contract to your future self. When you're making commitments, you're essentially promising your time and you're promising your energy. Whether it's a workout a work meeting, or catching up with a friend, honoring these commitments is like sending a friendly message to your future self saying, I've got your back. Tip number four, celebrate small wins. Imagine your future self as your biggest cheerleader. Celebrate every small win, no matter how insignificant it may seem. Finish the dishes, treat yourself to a nice little mini dance party, checked off all of your to-do list items, Reward yourself with your favorite little treat. This positive reinforcement creates a strong bond between your present and future self. And tip number five, mindful choices. Before you make decisions, ask yourself, is this something my future self will thank me for? This simple question can be a game changer. It encourages you to think beyond the immediate gratification and consider the long-term impacts of your choices, whether it's saving money, eating healthier, or investing in your own personal growth, your future self will be sending you virtual high fives with your mindful choices. And now I'm going to remind you a little bit about, about how weird I am and tell you something that I do when I think about my future self. This honestly is my favorite part about making my future self my best friend. Let's say I have a really busy and early morning. Well, I take 10 to 20 minutes the night before to get everything set up for the next day. And I'm talking everything. I lay out my work clothes in the bathroom with all my toiletries out and ready. I get my protein shake and my food organized in the fridge and I put it all in a bag ready to just grab in the morning. 
I set my shoes out with my socks individually side by side. And I get my backpack filled with my workout clothes, my sweat towels, my electrolytes, and everything that I'm going to need for the day. I'm talking I get everything ready so that when I wake up, I get out of bed, I rinse off in the shower, and I immediately have everything that I need to make the start of my day as smooth as possible. And then here it is. I specifically think, what can I do right now that will make it as easy on my future self as possible? And after I get everything ready for the night, I actually visualize my future self in the morning being so thankful that my past self, which is my current self, thanking my past self for setting me up for success. And then when the morning comes, I literally visualize my past self visualizing my future self. And for a moment, I am my own best friend, sending myself gratitude. It's like a spiritual high five for being a great friend to myself. Is that super weird? Hell yes. Does it generate incredible value for my life? And does it set me up to be as successful as possible in my goal of having a productive, progress-filled, service-filled great day? Hell yes. Is there science in doing what I do in that moment? In actually time traveling back and forth and giving myself love? I don't know. I don't know of any science, but I'm on the journey to finding out because I think that it actually has a huge impact. All I do know is that I love doing it and it works really well for me. And hopefully it gives you some inspiration on how you can become your own best friend, whether it's in the past, present, or future. So as we wrap up this episode, remember that treating your future self as your best friend isn't just about being organized or efficient. It's a mindset shift. It's about fostering a deep sense of care, respect, and empathy for the person that you're going to become. It's about acknowledging that your actions today have a direct and huge effect on your well-being and happiness down the road. Think about it. When you truly embrace this philosophy, you're not just making the most of your time and the most of your potential, but you're creating a positive ripple effect that touches every aspect of your life. Your future self becomes not just a friend, but a partner in your journey. If you're someone who has goals or dreams for the future, no matter how big or small, I hope that you'll try this letter writing exercise that we talked about and this action board that we talked about. Not only is it a powerful tool to help you get connected to yourself, to how you want to live your life and how you want your life to unfold, but it's also a way to figure out the next steps for how to get there. And if something doesn't work out or leads into a different direction, it's okay to pivot and it's okay to do some rerouting. The purpose of the exercise is to start taking action. And oftentimes action can lead to opportunities and places that we never thought imaginable. And one last thing, just because we're talking about the future doesn't mean you should skip out on the present because there is a lot of power in practicing stillness and living in the moment. The more you can live in the moment in your every day-to-day -day life, the more it allows us to get even more clarity on the path that we need to take to get to our desired future. And that's it, my friends, for this bite-sized brain snack. Share the knowledge that you gain with your friends and family and hold each other accountable. If you enjoyed this content, it helps a ton if you could post on your social media stories a screenshot of this episode and include one takeaway that you learned and make sure that you tag me and share your journey. Tag me at livingthedream underscore podcast or at Coach Damien underscore SD. And let us know how this episode benefited you. Let us know what we missed. Let us know what we got wrong. Tell us how you have made your future self your best friend. Update us on how the letter writing exercise went for you or what your action board looks like. Message us if you have any suggestions or tips that will help your Live in the Dream team that we can discuss on future episodes. I will be right here with you working on making us stronger, happier, and healthier humans. Until next time, friends, keep living the dream.